welcome back to my channel, Home Sweet Classroom. Thank you so much for coming by and visiting me here in my teaching journey. If you are new to my channel, my name is Maritza and I'm a second grade teacher. I teach overseas serving military children and I thought I'd share with you guys a vlog on this week's happenings and everything that's going on. So if you want to hear what is going on in second grade in my classroom, stay tuned. Hey guys, so this week has been truly, really, really busy. I've tried to vlog like every day, like um, like a, or my weekly or weekly vlog, and that's just been very unsuccessful. <laughs> um, every day it's just been really busy. I've been planning with um, another, the other, the, third grade teacher and we've been doing so great after school we plan together and um, it's just been really busy so I thought I'd share with you I got this idea from another teacher vlogger amazing teacher and I just I was like that is so great that's a great idea so I thought I'd share with you the things that are happening this week in my classroom and just touch base with you guys some personal things are also hap also happening outside of the classroom in my life and if you have been following me you know that um, I will be moving soon so that date is coming up a little bit sooner than I expected and um, it's just it's gonna be a big change and it's just it's impacting everyone around me my family my students and it's just it's kind of been a roller coaster for me lately um, but I do want to share with you guys about that in just a little bit um, actually I might wait till the end of the video to share more about that because I do want to share with you all the other stuff that's happening in the classroom um, but first I want to start off with science because, oh my God, I've been overwhelmed with science in the classroom um, in a good way. And I have to say in a good way, it's overwhelming in a good way. Um, it's a lot of preparation and a lot of work on my part, but I think it's really paid off. Um, the turnout has been really great. My students have been enjoying it and it's just been really, really fun to see all of the things in my classroom growing and changing. So let me turn um, to our science area. It's not really like a crazy science area. Like I wish I had a lab, but it's over here in this small area over here. And I, it's like the sink is right here and I wish I didn't have a sink, but I do love that I have a sink too. But it just kind of takes up a lot of space. But this over here is all of our science stuff going on. So I'm gonna turn this camera around and show you all the stuff growing and changing in the classroom. So these are brassica seeds. They're growing quite quickly and they're supposed to get pretty big. Um, and again, they're brassica seeds. And we planted them. This one over here is our class one. It of course grew the fastest and it's so far the tallest um and yeah so each student has their own i have 21 students so these are 21 little cups of brassica seeds and they're super cute they love coming in and looking at them and observing them and um, next week we're going to be talking about the leaves the leaves and how um, the shape of them and how they're different from when they first sprouted like this one is just sprouting and yeah so we talked about how we use the plant food to help our our brassica seeds grow and i put this in the water and then we pour the water into this container and it um it grows them all together like it we don't we don't water them individually we, we put the water in here and then it soaks up the water so they really enjoy this we made this together we well we built this together um, oops, it's trying to get focused, but we built the light together and that was so much fun. I didn't realize um, a couple years ago when I taught second grade, I didn't build this with them and I didn't realize how much fun it was to help them um, explore and create something like this. So that was a lot of fun. And then we went ahead and um, did the, le the seeds and I also demonstrated and then they did some on their own. <clears throat> Let's see. So then we have mealworms. And each student has their own mealworm, and it's in here, um, well, somewhere. Some of them are, see, they grow, some of them grow mold. So I've got to, like, watch them and make sure, because it's, it's a little muggy in the classroom. So it, we, I try, we try to change them out. In here, we do have our mealworms, our class mealworms, in these two containers. And then my students are able to, um kind of look at them look at look or explore them and then they use their hands or their 
or the spoon. Oh, here's one. Here's a mealworm. There's one. And then they grow into beetles. So I have, we're looking at the whole cycle and then I have it here. So we've got the mealworm stages into growing into from the, um, the eggs to the larva and then the, uh, the pupa and then the uh, adult beetle. So it kind of, they've seen all of these stages. And then as you can see down here, we have the milkweed bugs. These are not my favorite. I Okay, I have to admit, I do not like these because they make me itchy and they just kind of freak me out. But they're right here in these baggies. So I have them in like the string here and um, they're, that's their habitat, that's their home right there. And then they get to observe them and uh, goodness, I feel like they're just freaky looking. I don't know, I don't really like spiders. So just having in the classroom makes me nervous. <laughs> but look at all of this. And then just recently we got silkworms and this is their food, but this is, oh, my students found these and that was fun to look at. They're just, they're actually molting. They're molts of um, other insects they found outside, which was fun. But these are the silkworms and it's gonna be hard to see, honestly. Um, they're little tiny, little tiny eggs right now and they're, they're really hard to see but i wish i could get a better view but they're really tiny and we have to put these into this big old box and then put egg cartons around it and um i wish we had mulberry leaves but we don't so i have to use this the silkworm chow so i have to follow the directions and look at it on how to make it their food and then put it in there so we've got a lot going on so we've got the brassica seeds the milkweed i mean the mealworms the milkweed bugs um their individual silkworms we have the milkweed their individual mealworms and then the silkweed were the silkworms and then we also are going to have butterflies so Guys, I feel like overwhelmed with insects and it's just like a lot insects and plants But it it's just it's so much fun to do as well. So I've got like a lot going on over there So as you can see we have like a very very busy science afternoons um, It's just it's been a lot of fun. So if you ever get your hands on science using FOSS I would surely like advise you to take advantage of it, teach as much as you can of it, take care of those bugs and um, use as much of it as you can because it is so much fun. Um, and especially like just seeing their recordings and their journals. I did have, like, I do have like our class journal and um, we use it as a class like I model and then they just get the hang of it so, so quickly. It's really, really nice to be able to see that progress and um, see the insects growing and changing, the plants growing and changing, and then we'll get into earth science. So it's so, so busy, but really cool. So I'll move on from science because as you can see I'm really enjoying it. But um, a lot has been going on. Like today we made uh, monsters. We had expanding, we were doing um, expanding, expanded form of using uh, two digit numbers in expanding form, and we did expanding monsters. There was a template on TPT, but I didn't want to pay for it. Um, so I went ahead and made a template, and I was like, oh man, um, I hope my monsters came out okay. But so I did these. these they were supposed to write the number, pick, I asked them to pick a number between 20 and 99, and um, just to give them a challenge because a lot of them would want to pick like 22 or or like 12 so I wanted to one wanted them to pick a number that was a little bit more challenging so this is one of the expanding so they wrote the number then they modeled it and then they wrote the tens and the ones and then um, an addition sentence and this one says seven plus nine it shouldn't say seven plus nine so um, here's another one they've made I thought this one was really cute it's winking she said and then here's this one it has a mustache <laughs> um these are my favorite they reminded him of the gold noodles uh, little monsters so these are adorable put the feet at the bottom some of them did some of them didn't this one has teeth um and then some of them had their eyes a little bit different like this one had their eyes a little bit different and so they were all really, really creative. As you can see, I have a whole stack right here. 
and I'm gonna put them up. So I did the monsters, expanding monsters, because it's, of course, ha ha the month of October, so it's like ha it's close to Halloween, so I thought it'd be really cute to have some expanding monsters or monsters in the classroom, and um, it turned out really well. My students got the concept rather quickly, so I was really happy about that, um, because I didn't wanna do something fun and exciting and then they didn't understand the concept. So I made sure they understood the concept first by teaching it. And I had already been talking about tens and ones in the value of a number um, the past two days and I was using base 10 blocks. So I did that at my small group. So I would use uh, the base 10 blocks and then um, Yesterday we had I had small groups and we did the roll it make it draw it activity So I think that's why that activity was really easy for them because they already had a good concept of the model of the number and the value of each digit um, So this is what I gave them and these are dry erase like slip slip on slippers I don't know pockets <laughs> and they rolled they would roll two dice then make the number or write the number then make it by um, we using the base 10 blocks and then they would draw it also the base 10 blocks representing the numbers so this that's why I think it was rather easy for them and they were able to make those connections quickly and that's essentially what I want my students to be doing is to be making connections from one lesson to another um, so that they're understanding that we're building upon our knowledge of number concepts so that was really fun to do I thought I was going to need to review it again but I did it so we were able to move on and on Monday we start on something else um can't remember right now but I will be doing it over the weekend probably with planning something else that's new is behind me these um, facts ninjas fact ninjas so some of my students are doing like multiplication they're on multiplication or they're still doing addition um, and I'm trying to like encourage them to be practicing to be fluent so I put out fact ninjas so as soon as they master it they get to go to the next level with a kapow um, so that's really fun now, if you guys aren't familiar with Spanish Heritage Month, which I am a fan of, um, and I like to celebrate in the classroom, you might have seen my last video, and if you haven't, go check it out. But I talked about Spanish Heritage Month, and I talked about um, the involvement in the classroom that you can incorporate different ways, culture in the classroom, um, with using Span with Spanish Heritage Month. So today we did um, we did a read aloud for using uh, a read. It was a read aloud about piñatas, and that was a lot of fun because next week we're going to be a parent is going to make a piñata, so she's going to bring it in. And I thought I relate it with a book, so we did that this morning. But if you haven't gone to see the other my other video on different on different books on. Um, Spanish Heritage Month, go check it out. It's a lot of fun. And then yesterday we read, um, or we saw a short documentary on Roberto Clemente, and it made a lot of connection to my students because some of them play on in a baseball team. So they had a lot of fun watching it, um, and just they were really excited about it because it's something that they're passionate about too. So I um, showed that video, and I wanted to do something with it, but it just didn't allow enough time. But I did see a really great activity on Teachers Pay Teachers that had to do with a as a group activity. Um, you give them a Paper, and I'll show you a picture here if you want to see what it looks like and maybe interested in it and I love it because it's actually a resource that can be used from second all the way to 12th grade so if you buy it and maybe next year you know that you're not gonna be teaching the same grade level you can still use this resource and it's good for many many grade levels but anyway it's a, a you give each student a page and then you put them together as a group and it's as a, as a group, they collaborate to put the puzzle together and it makes this big collage or mural. And you can like hang it anywhere, at the in the front of the school, um, in the hallway, in your classroom. And it just like creates this nice environment that you're building on upon, that you're celebrating other cultures and um, recognizing the Spanish Heritage Month. But in addition to that, I talked about as well in that last video about um, how I incorporated it into my class into my classroom that has to relate to my students So I asked my students to research their own heritage and their own culture and just to show them that we're all different um, So I hung up 
I hung those up back here. So I thought I'd show you guys what they look like and if I can get it at a good angle. So my students had their heritage, they researched their heritage and um, wrote it on paper. So that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed reading them and I wanted to make, I want to make time to, for them to present it. I use my microphone, it's so much fun. If you haven't, don't have a microphone guys, I strongly encourage you to get a microphone for your classroom or two. Um, it's a lot of fun and let me grab it because I do want to show you. So this is the microphone and every time my students get a students get a chance to talk on it, I give them the microphone or get a chance to talk, to speak it to the class. I give them the microphone and um, they're able to share and it kind of just puts a spotlight on them. That's the purpose in it and uh, calls the attention to them. So <clears throat> I want to make time for my students to share their heritage background, but a lot of them did share like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know I was, um, this and from i was irish part irish or i was part um or i'm all american so it was really fun to for them as a family project to research their background and their culture and just who they really are and how it relates to the spanish heritage month and the things that the latinos do and I'm bringing that to the classroom. So we still have um, a couple more days to celebrate that. You have until October 15th to incorporate it and talk about it until October 15th is the last day. But, so that's what we'll be doing. We'll be doing the piñata on Wednesday of next week. And then that will be the last of it. Next week we do have a field trip, but I won't talk about that until my next vlog. <laughs> Um, what else happened this week? I'm trying to think of all the other stuff that is happening in the classroom. Hmm. So something else that we did that was exciting, and I'm gonna go back to math, was that um, we did, so I was telling you that we were learning about even and odd numbers and how I'm incorporating that into, well, it's just part of like the unit, it's number concepts was what they're actually learning. And, um, so before we went into place value, I talked about even and odd numbers and the patterns and the, the what, something we did that was just truly a lot of fun and they were just really excited to be able to express their personalities through this activity was the an even and even Steven odd Todd. So I did an activity where I gave the lesson first and then I had, I gave them their name printed out on a piece of paper and I have it actually back here. Um, I gave them their names printed out and they were supposed to um, get their name and circle their even or circle pairs in their name. And then um, I asked them to stop and then I asked them to stand up if they were even or at, while they were um, circling we talked about what is a pair and when it's not a pair then what does it stand for how many are left over and and so on so then while um while they were circling when they were all done i asked them to stand up if they were an even number because we had already reviewed this concept the day before so it was like an extension it was a day two extension is what it was so then once they circled their pairs and looked at if they were had one left over or not then they realized oh i'm even or i'm odd this is even or odd so then i called them out and i said if you're even stand up so i've had all the evens stand up and they were like oh i'm even and then you had then i called for all the odd students to stand up and then they st stood up and the even sat down um, so it really gave them a good concept of, oh, there's a pair or there's not a pair. And then of course I could see those students who really did not understand it. And those are the students I worked with at a small group. So <clears throat> after that, then I had a little fun with it. I um, played the book, Even Steven, Odd Todd. And then I let them color while the, the book was playing. A lot of them were very interested and it was just, it turned out really, really great. I love that I was able to incorporate literature into math and it was a fun book. I actually really liked it. Um, and while they were coloring, I was going around looking at um, their concept of even Steven and odd Todd. And after the video, then I called, or as they were finished, they came and they placed their 
name in the right column, whether they were Even Steven or Odd Todd, and I have it up there, Even Steven and Odd Todd. And if they were even, they would put it in the even side, and if they were odd, they'd put it on the odd side. And then we, it became a competition after that. Even even Steven won is what I think it was. Oh no, Odd Todd won is what it was. So it was a lot of fun watching them understand the concept of even and Steven even and odd and then of course they're making that relation to literature even Stephen and odd todd so that's something else that happened today and they were just super excited that their name was on it and they could make it colorful and pretty um so they'll be taking that home next week and let's see what else happened this week a lot has happened this week and um, it just goes by so, so quickly. Um, our stations are coming along really, really well. Something I did incorporate that was different. Um, in the previous years, I've always done like a display of our stations up on the board or on a pocket chart. And then I would display it and then we would rotate. But I learned something different from another teacher that she did for reading, and I did it for reading as well. But then I did it for math because I thought it was so genius, and I was like, oh, what a great way for them to carry that around and not ask me or depend on the board when they're lost. So something I did incorporate was the fact <laughs> that I put it in their, in their folders. So for math, each student has their workstation folder, of course, and then they have this uh, per a sheet protector in their folder, and this is math rotations right here. Their group number is to the side on the side, and then the sticker represents what group they're in. And then, of course, when it changes, they just slip off that sticker and put it in another group, and then they go by round so they know where to go next and it's simple as that i really really like it and of course if these are like taken care of then i could use them year after year and then for reading i've done the same thing too um they have their own um chart and then they have their groups i have five groups for reading and for math as well but then they know that they they only follow their group so this specific student has it on group four. So she knows to just follow group four. And it just makes it easier for that student to see this column or those three stations. And for reading, I do it a little bit different. I do three stations a day because it doesn't allow me to do all, I don't want them to do one station, if that makes sense, like the whole entire time. Um, so I've done, I rotate it in three groups and then each group is 12 minutes. So eventually I see each group, um, for example, on Monday, I will just see group one, group two, group, and group three. I only see group three groups, obviously, because it's like, it's three rotations. So I only see three groups. And then the next day I see the next, uh, the next three again. And it's always group one that I see first because they're essentially my intervention group. And then the other, like the last group will be my group that needs just enrichment. So I only see them twice a week um so it, it it's worked out really well in the classroom because each student carries their own rotations and they all they have to do is look at it and know that where they're supposed to go next so it works out really really great for each student they're not lost i've got a lot of students who just don't understand the whole pocket chart system and where they're supposed to go even when their name is on it so just having them be able to carry it and know that their sticker is where they're supposed to go and that's their group um, it's just a re helpful reminder for them to see it so something i've been doing differently this week is also homework um, I posted a question on Teachers Connect and I, I asked about homework on how um, they do homework and like if it's something they always opt not to do or it's something you do. I've always given homework in some kind of way like unfinished homework, unfinished work goes for homework or if um, I just like assign a weekly thing and it's a packet. I remember doing that in first grade. And now that I'm back in second grade, um, I decided to do also something that's like weekly. Um, <clears throat> so I've been giving my students the, the, I've been giving them this sheet of paper and it goes from Monday through Thursday only. I don't assign homework over the weekend, but I give them this sheet. 
Uh, something I did differently for Wednesday and Thursdays is doing a family math game. And that's what I really wanted to share with you guys. A game it and or math baggy. And there's just like a bunch of games in here. And um, I thought it was really great because they're, I want I want to encourage my students to do family math games. And that was the whole purpose in the, the math games baggy. And on the homework page, um, it says on there to, for them to do... A family math game so that's that's what they do here um, on Wednesday and Thursdays for math and it's, it's just to spend about 10 minutes five to ten minutes on doing a family math game and then I provide them with a bunch of different options and then on the other two pages um, well these are the different choices that they can pick up from and I just kind of put like a bunch of them in there for them to see and that or for them to use and then I have like a full explanation of practicing. I have some students who have gone past addition and subtraction, like they've already mastered that and they're pretty fluent. So I added on here um, some things that they can do if they're practicing multiplication, division, even if they get to that, and um, just other different family math games that they can do um, that don't involve like a whole lot of money or a whole lot of a whole lot of effort or work and they don't need to go out and buy anything that's too expensive that they might already have at home um so i wanted to encourage parents to do family math games together at home and not be part of part of their homework and daily practice um so i provided a whole bunch of options and i put them in a baggie for them to use some of my students were saying i don't have a dice at home so i went ahead and explained like you can do a virtual dice or you can um and i printed out one that they could use and roll it up into or fold it up into a cube and that way they have something to use at home or they can even order it online too um so I thought that would be really fun and that's something new I'm doing and I hope that works for my students and my parents. I haven't heard anything back. I'm hoping to hear something back from parents and like their feedback in what how they feel about it. But um, so that's really all I have for you guys this week. Um, all of these things are just like happening so so quickly and so my official date that I'll be leaving to North Carolina is actually going to be at the end of October. So my vlogging channel might change a little bit and um, I don't know in what way, but I'm hoping to make that announcement later and just kind of seeing where um, it takes me. So I'll be moving to North Carolina sooner than anticipated, sooner than my family is, and um, I'll be heading out there at the end of the month. So some things are to come to change and I'm... I told my students today and guys like tears were coming out and all like it was a crazy mess um I was really really sad like it was just really hard on my class and for me um they're only second grade they're only like seven eight years old so it's really hard for them to like deal with these changes but I really did want it for for them to hear it from me rather than to hear it from rumors or from parent uh, from other parents maybe um so I thought I would tell them today and not over the long weekend here because we don't have school Monday and this is a really really small community so I didn't want them to hear it from somebody else um, that wasn't me and then like questions will rise of course um, so that was like the big thing that happened this week at the end of the week and they were really really sad and so was I like I was crying guys it was really hard um, but we still have a little bit left together, so I'm making the best out of it, trying to establish as much as I can for them so that way um, it's a smooth transition and into the next person can like transition them into smoothly into the rest of the school year. So I am leaving sub plans for the teacher that comes in for like the next month. So I wanna get caught up on that. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and being with me. Um, I poured out my heart to you guys just a little bit ago and just kind of share with you the things that are happening and it's sad and it's it's like different, uh, di really different feeling to leave my class um, this early in the year and I'm glad though that I was able to start the year off. We don't have a teacher in place here so I was, I'm really glad that I was able to like start them off rather than them not having a teacher to begin with to start off the year so so i'm really grateful for that um to be able to have done that for them so 
Well, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed um, just catching up with me, seeing what it's second grade here looks like this past week, some things we've done this past week, or even just today. Um, I really enjoyed catching up with you guys and just sharing with you the things that are happening here in second grade, what things are working, what things need some work on. And I'm ready to head out the door and enjoy this a long week when we don't have school Monday. So I am going to go and enjoy that weekend. It's my husband's birthday this weekend, so I'm really excited about it. Um, I think when we're going to the beach, I'm making some cheesecake for him. And yeah. And thank you so much for joining me in my teaching journey and uh, supporting my YouTube channel. And I hope that maybe throughout this vlog, you got some ideas. And don't forget to share down some comments down below. I love hearing from you guys and just being able to talk with you guys and um, sharing your ideas with me as well. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up for me. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.